Okay, everyone, this video is going to sort of be an extension of my last video, A Life Under Law. Uh, in this video, we're going to see just how far the law goes, just how impossible it is to keep, and how, how serious it is, okay? How there is no grace in the law whatsoever, okay? The law doesn't congratulate you. God doesn't congratulate you and accept you because you tried to keep it, okay? There's there's nothing in the law that says, you know, it will honor you trying your best, okay? We're going to see a few examples in the Bible, in the Old Testament, of two people, okay? One, that was actually a perfect mirror of somebody trying their best and with good intentions, okay? We're going to see an example of a man that did something... So simple as picking up something, okay? In the law, under the law, there is no mercy for it, okay? And this isn't talking about uh, these specific two things that the law condemned and killed these two men for. These aren't drinking, smoking, gambling, chasing women, okay? This is two things, simple things that you, a lot of people that don't understand the extent of the law, how there's no mercy under the law, they wouldn't understand how this could happen. But this is how perfect, how righteous, how just, how holy God is. When He has commandments that are to be kept perfectly and you do not measure up to that, you will be destroyed, okay? The soul that sinneth shall die, okay? So if you're going about your salvation up according to you and your performance and you trying to keep the law, okay, you trying to not sin, you trying to keep things perfectly, or you trying to do your best, no, that is not enough, okay? The law has nothing to do with you trying to do your best. God never said, Israel, if you try to do your best, then I will bless you. Israel, if you try to do your best, or, or any person, if you try to do your best, you can earn eternal life. No. If you want to try to earn eternal life, if you tr want to try to merit it, okay, it, first of all, eternal life is a free gift. We all know that. It's a free gift given to God by grace to faith. Okay, but people try to earn it because they don't believe that it's free. Even the, ball, the Bible <laughs> the Bible refers to eternal life as the free gift numerous times, okay? We're going to teach, see two examples of men that weren't doing the what the world calls today, you know, the... The, the bad, bad sins, you know. These were men that were doing two specific things that was, uh, the death was the penalty for. Okay. First, we're going to look at James 2 just to kind of see something here. Just for all the people that think that, you know, you get to heaven by doing your best or trying your best or your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds, okay. In James 2, it says, verse 10, For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet if in one point he is guilty of all. Okay, there's 613 laws in the Mosaic Law. This verse right here explains, if you were just, you know, going to keep the whole law, and yet offend, if you offend one law out of all, you're guilty of all. Okay? You've broken the chain. You are a transgressor. So that means if you keep 612 laws and you break one, it's your worker of iniquity. You, you're done. You're finished. If you don't have Christ's blood atonement put toward your account, you are toast. There is no hope for you if you do not have Christ. Okay? And I don't say that in a good way. I say that in a... It, it's horrible that people actually think that they can measure up to God's holiness to earn eternal life. The sinless perfectionists, okay? They're liars, okay? They claim, they claim that they do not sin anymore. They claim they, they they claim perfection in the flesh, and that is irate. That is, that is, foolish. Okay. But here we see a perfect example in James two verse ten: For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, it just takes one sin, guys. People try to act like, well, if you're sinning a bunch of sins and going crazy, you know, if you're if you're just sinning a lot of bad sins, then you'll go to hell. And but if you sin every now and then, you'll go. No, no, no. It only takes one sin, okay? And we're going to see two examples of men in the Old Testament under law. People try to put themselves under law. They try to earn eternal life. They try to <clears throat> work for the free gift, okay? They try to measure up to God's standard of holiness. 
we're going to see what happened to these two men that just did two simple things. One of them did something out of, they were trying to help, okay? They were in their best interest trying, you know, trying to help, okay? In death, okay? One guy tried to do something on the Sabbath in death. We're just going to look. A lot of you already know these examples, but I just want to show this for people that probably haven't seen these examples of the extent of the law and just how far the law goes, how a person would have to measure up to God's holiness, which is impossible for a person to do. Well, that was James 2, mind my finger. We're going to look at my bookmarks real quick. First, we're going to go, okay? Uh, let's see right here. Second Samuel 6, 1. We're going to look at this. It says, Again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000, okay? And David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Baal of Judah, um, or Baal or whatever, to bring up from thence the Ark of God, the Ark of the Covenant, okay? Whose name is called by the name of the Lord of the hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims. And they set the Ark of of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab. And that was in Gabeah. And Uzzah, I think that's how you pronounce it, and Ahio, or I'm not sure how you pronounce these guys, the sons of Abinadab drove the new cart. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was at uh, Gibeah, accompanying the ark of God, and Ahio went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord in all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even on harps and on uh, psalteries, uh, psalteries, and uh, timbrels and corn cornets and on the cymbals. And they were at Nacon's threshing floor. Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. So here we see that the ark of the covenant was on a cart being pulled by some oxen, okay? And Uzzah was one of the men that was walking, not, you know, next to a car, okay? Well, the oxen stumbled, and what Uzzah, I guess, thought that the ark was going to fall, so he, out of worry that the ark would fall, went to grab it to stabilize it so it wouldn't fall to the ground. So right here we see that he was sincere. He was trying to help. He was trying to keep the ark from hitting the ground in uh, one second guys if you if you hear my kids in the background sorry for that uh anyways just try to drown it out Uzzah put forth his hand to keep the ark from falling off the cart okay let's see what happened to him and this wasn't a drinking smoking gambling running around corral you know carousing with women okay watching x-rated movies and stuff this is a man trying to keep the ark of the covenant from hitting the ground he was trying to look out for the best interest interest of you know god trying to do something good, okay? <laughs> and let's see what happened. Uh, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah. And God smote him there for his error, and they, he died by the ark of God. Okay, this man was smote by God because he tried to keep the ark from falling, okay? His good work got him killed, okay? And this is what many people are doing all over the world. They're trying to put forth their meritorious some <laughs> good works, okay, to earn eternal life. And it and see, that's not good enough. See what happened to Uzzah? He died instantly just to keep the ark from falling. Okay, and people think, oh, the, the big sins, you know, those will keep you out of heaven, but the small sins are okay. No, no, no. This man tried to help. Okay. This is this is a mirror, a foreshadow kind of a people trying to uh <clears throat> People trying to take part in their own salvation. They're trying to help, trying to save themselves or keep themselves saved. No, 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 it will not work. You just dirty up the whole deal. You need to totally trust Christ through faith alone and Christ alone, okay? But we see he just died from trying to keep the ark from hitting the ground. See, that's how far the law goes. God forbade anybody to touch that ark, okay? And he touched it and died, okay? It doesn't matter what his motives was. Yeah, his motives may have been good in our eyes. But it doesn't matter. The commandment was do not touch it. Okay? So he took upon himself to grab it, to keep it from hitting the ground. People say, well, he was just trying to help. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter you're trying to help. It doesn't matter you're trying to, you know, so-so uh, do the right thing. It, it, you, can't, you cannot contribute to your salvation. You must trust on Christ. Do it the way the Lord says it to be done. 
And that's faith alone in Christ alone. People think their motives have something to do with their salvation. They think that their sincerity has something. No, it has nothing to do with you. Get your eyes off you and your eyes onto Christ. Okay, because so that's the only thing that's going to be able to save you. This is a foreshadow of somebody trying to save themselves. Okay, and look what happens. You can't save yourself. No matter how you feel or what you try to do or your best interest or how sincere you may be. See, this guy just died. He was smote by the Lord. The anger of the Lord kindled towards him. Okay? Because that's how it is under the law. And if you're trying to obey your way into heaven, trying to go the law way, this is what's going to happen to you every time. Because there is no mercy under the law. There's no grace under the law. Okay? I'm going to go to another example real quick. See, this is how far people think, oh, just, you know, like I said, these other sins, you know, drinking and uh, smoking and, you know, watching bad things and stuff. Oh, those are the big ones. Adultery, you know, murder and all the, you know, these sins are the only sins will keep you. No, it's, it just takes one sin and you, you, that's it. It's over. You need Christ's atonement. Okay. Okay. Numbers 1532. Here's another example. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. And they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron and unto all the congregation. Okay, let's look at this. This man was just picking up sticks on the Sabbath. Okay, and they, they captured him and took him to Moses and Aaron. And they put him in the ward because it was not declared what should be done to him. And the Lord said unto Moses, the man shall be surely put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. And all the congregation brought him without the camp and stoned him with stones, and he died as the Lord commanded Moses. Now look at that, guys. This man was picking up sticks on the Sabbath, and he got stoned to death. There is no mercy under the law. If you've never trusted in Christ alone truly, there's no mercy. Okay? You're trying to work your way to heaven. Okay? There's no mercy. Okay? No wonder so many people feel the fearful and expect to die and go to hell because they are putting themselves under the curse of the law. They're trying to work their way. This man was stoned to death for picking up sticks. Okay? But we try to say, oh, well, only if you're doing the big sins, you know, you'll go to hell. But the small sins, you know, this is a perfect refuting verse for people that try to belittle certain sins and act like they can get to heaven uh, you know even though they're committing these little sins God just sweeps that under the rug or those are no big deal this man picked up sticks come on guys he did not he did not smoke a cigarette he didn't gamble he didn't carouse he didn't murder somebody he didn't steal something he picked up sticks this is how far the law goes everybody so if you want to try to make yourself out to be some kind of good person, just because you don't do the big sins, okay, you're sorely mistaken. Okay, have you, have you ever picked up anything on the Sabbath? Okay, why won't you condemn yourself for that? But, you know, you'll try to condemn somebody for drinking a beer. Okay, see, this is foolishness and hypocrisy. Okay, we see two prime examples in the Old Testament of people under law that did two things, okay, in our eyes today, would be nothing, okay? But death, it merited them death because they were under the law. That's how it is under the law. There's no mercy under the law, okay? You got to be under God's grace, okay? If you're not under God's grace, you will be destroyed. And that's what the Bible teaches. It doesn't matter what you think or how you feel, okay? This man picked up sticks on the Sabbath day, okay? And, and, and yet people will condemn others, Okay, because they think that, oh, you know, what I'm doing is okay, but what you're doing is bad. You know, it's just, it's foolishness. All right. They think that, oh, well, you know, in, in the sinless perfectionist, you know, and other people try to put different gauges of sin. Like certain sins aren't that bad and certain sins. Listen, if picking up a stick can merit you death under the law, okay, if you, you know, trying to help out and keep the Ark of the Covenant from hitting the ground can merit you death, all sin destroys, kills. All sin condemns. Okay? That's why if you don't have Christ's blood atonement put toward your account, you have no hope. 
This is what the message we're trying to get out, guys. It's by grace through faith. People think they can work their way to heaven. It's, 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 it's uh, nonsense. Okay, but that's the way the flesh thinks. That's the way of man. That's the way of Cain. You know, bringing his own sacrifice. His own works. Okay. All right. That's how people are. This is why the grace of God, the true gospel, is so detrimental that you understand that you are not saved by anything other than Christ alone, faith in Christ alone. Because if you have never, okay, this is how deceptive it is, okay? If you've believed your entire life that it's not by faith alone in Christ alone, it's faith in Christ plus you, you have believed a false gospel, therefore you have no salvation. You are not born again no matter what you're doing right now. There's a lot of people out there, okay, that thought they got saved, by a false gospel that says you must repent of your sins, turn from your sins, stop sinning, plus believe in Christ. Well, that's not the gospel. Okay, you, you, you have faith in yourself plus Christ. No, that's not the gospel. And you think you're saved because you go, to, you go to church? You think you're saved because you play, you know, you sing in the choir? You think, you think you're saved because you pass the offering plate around and you try to cut the church's grass and you try to do these good things and read your Bible and help people and give money? Okay. No, 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 no. It's by grace through faith. Okay? This, but, you know, I've said it before. This is what blows people's minds. Okay? All the things that these people that profess to have salvation but have never trusted in Christ alone can do, a lost man can do. A lost man can give money. A lost man can go to church. A lost man can read his Bible. A lost man can sing in the church choir. A lost man can do all these things. But what a lost man hasn't done is trust Christ alone. Matthew chapter 7, 21, 23. Uh, Depart from me, I never knew you, ye that work of iniquity. Okay? And the people were professing, but Lord, we did all these good things. He never knew them. They never did the will of the Father, which is to believe on Christ. So anyways, I'm going to end this video. There's no mercy under the law. We've just seen two prime examples of men that did things that in our eyes we wouldn't think was bad at all. They were trying to help, but it merited them death because God's law is not about your relative goodness or how you feel or uh, <clears throat> your sincerity, your humanistic sincerity. It's about His perfect righteousness, holiness that we would never, ever measure up to. Okay, we think we have a sense of good. We think we have a good that we can do. All of our righteousness is a filthy rags, guys. But I'm going to end this video, and guys, listen. It doesn't matter what the sin is. One sin condemns, and then you're done. If you don't have Christ's perfect, holy, magnificent blood sacrifice. Okay? God bless everybody.